This video is brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com slash YT. Hey everybody, my name is Bryce Ayers and I'm a full-stack software engineer specializing in open source software. And today we're gonna to be learning about Formic. Formic is a library for React that it helps uh, make forms essentially easier to build. Otherwise, the process is pretty manual. Uh, so you can check out jaredpalmer.com slash formic if you want to see the documentation. Uh, make sure before we get started that you have Node.js installed. You can go to nodejs.org and install the uh, long-term support version. Also, the editor I'm going to use today is going to be Visual Studio Code. So if you don't have it already, go ahead and download it. And then to start our project, we're going to use Create React App, which is just a bootstrap uh, React project. Uh, created by Facebook. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll come over here to our command line. Make sure you have uh, npm installed. You can type dash version. We'll see it's 6.11.3, so it should have mpx installed. Perfect. So let's go ahead and create our project with mpx, which is just, uh, it's like an npm installer where you don't have to save the, the files uh, to your system necessarily for the install. So I'll type mpx create react app and we'll call it formic tutorial. And then depending on your system and your internet connection, this may take a few minutes uh, more than likely 30 seconds or less to go ahead and bootstrap the project. And I'll pause it here while it's installing. All right, now that it's installed, you'll see it has some commands here uh, that you can run. So let's go ahead and CD into the project. Change directory. And I'm going to open this up in my favorite editor, Visual Studio Code. All right, now that we got that open, let's go ahead into our source directory here. And you should see one called app.js. Perfect. And I'm just going to pull this up, the terminal that they have here. And we just need to add a couple packages to get started. And I'm going to use Yarn for this uh, part of the project since that was recommended by Create React App. So we'll say yarn add formic. We also need to add styled components for some basic styling of our stuff. And we need to add yup. So yup will be for form validation, uh, part of the joy library. Perfect. Now we can run npm actually, excuse me, yarn start. Go to localhost 3000. We see our app running, perfect. Drag that over. So now we have a working application, but not much to it just yet. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let's create, let's see what we want to build here first. Let's actually start with some styles. I'm not going to focus on styling too much for this app. Just because. So let me actually create another file in here. Call it styles.js. And we'll say import. Let me make that a little bigger here. There we go. Import styled from styled components. And then let's put this here. So I'm just going to paste some stuff in here real quick. I think I can minimize this for right now. So what I'm going to do is export uh, this variable called styles. I uh, don't really need to know the syntax. It's just another way you can do your CSS styling. But we're going to have an H1 element. We're just going to center it up. We're going to have a form. 
And we're just going to do uh, display flex, have it in a column format, just a little margin spacing. Our error messages, we're going to make them red. Um, and then our submit button, I just set it to a color blue, text white, um, and just give it some border radius. So nothing crazy there. I'm just going to save that. And then I'll import that in here. We can go ahead and delete this here. We'll import it from styles. So we can get rid of all this here. And I'll just put a div for now, actually. Just put nothing. Actually, we just put styles. Let's do that. Save that. Come back over here. Error parsing. There we go. Come back over, refresh. Should just say test in the top corner. Perfect. All right. So what we want to do here is we want to import Formic from Formic. And now inside here, let's create our Formic component. And inside our Formic component, we need a couple of things we need to set. And so we need to put some initial values. And with our initial values for our form, will be an object. And the form fields I think we want to have here will be name, email, accepted terms, and we'll say a select for special powers. So we'll say name, we'll set it to an empty string. Say email, we'll set it to an empty string say accepted terms. So if you had some terms, they needed a little checkbox before they went past it. We can set it to false. And say we need to know their special power. And we can save that. Um, one other thing we need is we need a validation schema. So say validation schema. Now what this is gonna be, this is actually gonna come from yup. So what we can do is go import all as yup from yup. So if you remember, I was telling you about yup, uh, comes from the joy validation uh, family, um, typically used with, I'm trying to think what that Node.js framework is, um, happy, happy JS. So in happy JS, they, do, they use uh, joy, um, which is, I guess yup is a derivative of that um, per se. So here we can actually set validation for these form fields. So instead of manually in React, going ahead and setting name and email and checking if it's the string length is whatever, we can do that all kind of um, right here with yup. So we can say yup, and we say the form is gonna be an object. And our name field, you can just say yup.string. And then you can just, here's the cool part, you can just start chaining things on. So we can say min, we'll say three. Um, so we'll say it needs to be a minimum of three characters. And so then we can provide a custom error message here. So we'll say it must be at least three characters. And we can chain another thing on there. We can say max, let's say 15. 15 characters or less. And we also want it to be required. And our custom message will say required. Nothing crazy there. Now we gotta do the same for email. You can quickly see forms even with this helper take a long time to do. So again, this will be a string. Say email. So the email is the validator. Um, and we'll say invalid email address and we'll say dot required all 
Now for our accepted terms. We'll say, yep. And this is not going to be this is not going to be a string. This one will be actually a Boolean value. And we'll say required. And I think if you don't put that uh, required string in there, it just give you a default, uh, I think lowercase required, if I remember correctly. Perfect. Um, and then also one more thing we want to chain. Um, and so we want to make sure it's actually uh, a certain value. So we'll say one of... We can pass an array, we'll say true. So it has to match one of the values in the array, but since we're only passing true, essentially you have to set it to true. You can't not set it. Um, and we can pass an error message just in case. So you must accept the terms and conditions. And finally, our special power field, which will be a select dropdown. We say yep dot string. This is just going to be a bunch of strings. And here we'll use that one of again. And there's much more to the yep uh, library. We're just scratching the surface on it. You can get some pretty customized validation uh, without having. I mean, can you only imagine if you had to type this all out by hand? Um, we'll say one of. Let's say what are the superpowers? We'll say flight. Say invisibility, and we'll say wealthy bat guy, Bruce Wayne, or we'll say other. Then we'll give it our error message. We'll say invalid special power. So not really going to pop up. Um, I mean, there's no other way. If it's a select, you pretty much have to pick one of those. So shouldn't really run into many issues with that one. Um, and then we'll just chain a required on there. All right. So we save that. Oop, missed a comma there. So that looks valid. Come back over. Still nothing showing up just yet. We got a little more work to do. Um, and so what we can also do is we can set our on submit function. So this is kind of the callback that'll be called when the form gets submitted. And so we're going to set how we want to handle this. And so we're going to say values. So the first uh, entry into this callback function is all the values from the form. And then there's also some helpers that get passed in here. So set submitting. And so you can kind of set it to like a loading state essentially with that and reset form. So it's handy after they submit the form, maybe you wanna go ahead and automatically reset it for the user. So they can add another one, for example. Um, and so for this, instead of making an API call, uh, just gonna kinda of do a quick test here. We'll just do set timeout. So after a certain amount of time, we'll say three seconds, it'll go ahead and trigger an alert. So it'll pop up. And all I'm going to do is just print out the values. Say values null two, so they kind of pretty print for us. And once we click OK on that, uh, let's go ahead and reset the form. So we can use that helper. And we can set submitting to false. And you'll see we'll use that on our, uh, we set some logic in our submit button. So that way we'll change it from saying submit to saying loading. All right, so we got that. So that's looking pretty good. Um, next thing we want to do, I just want to create some quick components here for our form helpers. So normally you can use some built-in formic uh, components they have or just write them all by hand yourself. But this will kind of clean up our body of our uh, component here. And so I'm going to create just some custom components for our text field, our check spot, our checkbox, and our select. So I'll say const custom text input. And what will get passed in will be the label. And we'll just set props in case there's anything else you want to pass in, just make it pretty reusable here. And then from here, what we can do is we can use a hook called use field. So let me add it here. And we can destructure 
So we'll do field and meta. So equals use field and we'll pass it the props. Now that we have that information, from there we can go return and we'll return our actual component. So I'm just gonna do an empty, uh, that way it doesn't return any div tags, it'll just allow us to return a uh, React fragment here. And so I will say label, so we wanna label for our item. I'll say HTML4, since four is a reserved word. And we can say props.id or props.name in case there's no ID passed. And we'll actually write out the label in between there. And then let's give it an input. We'll say class name equals, let's give it an arbitrary name, text input. And here we want to add on any uh, fields essentially. So we're gonna use a spread operator. And so all of these and this object here will get spread across and applied. And we'll do the same for props in case anything's passed in there and override everything else. And so we'll self-close that. Now here's where it gets interesting. We wanna render out the error uh, for this form essentially. So what we can do is we can say meta dot touched. Um, and so this is kind of a helper we get to say, has the input field been touched? So did it ever trigger um, a focus and then a, and then a blur essentially, or trigger a, a focus for the touched? And then we want to check for the error. And so if this and this are true, then we use a ternary operator. Then we want to show this, which will just be a div class name. Well, if you remember from our CSS we set, we'll call it error. And then all we want to render in there is the actual error itself. And this will be our error message coming from uh, the Yup library that we had down here. Otherwise, if everything looks good, we'll just render null. So no error message will be displayed. So we can save that. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna copy this to kind of save some time. And I'll call this one, oops. Looks like I misspelled it there. I miscased it. Call this one custom checkbox. Since these are all pretty similar. We don't have to change too much here. Other than here we're gonna say props and we'll say checkbox the pass of the type. And then from there, we can say label. I'm just gonna call it, say class name, checkbox. So we can target that. And input type. equals checkbox. And then, okay. Then here, I know it's a little confusing, but, and then here we're gonna render children. So we need to make sure children's passed in. So it's actually instead of label, children will get passed in for this one. clean this up here. There we go. So we'll pass in basically the text that'll be next to the checkbox. Um, so this will be used for our accepted terms. So we can have a little checkbox and then next to it, whatever text we want to pass in, it can say, please accept uh, our terms, terms of agreement, um, anything like that. So not too much different than what we had before. And then finally, our custom select is what we need to create. And I think this one is about the same. I'm trying to remember what was different about this one. Oh, here we go. Select. Not since it's not an input, It'll just be purely a drop down. Perfect. 
So I think we're good now to actually start adding stuff to our form. So if we scroll down here, you can see this is a pretty tedious process. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're actually use a render prop. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, essentially it's a, a function that gets passed along that'll basically give you back, in our case, some props to render out. And that'll, the props will actually have uh, some special uh, function calls for us so we can check like is submitting and stuff like that. So we type form and form will get imported from Formic if I look up here. Yep, there it is, got auto imported for us. So I can type form and from here, let's do an H1 and we'll say sign up. So we have our sign up form. Now what's cool is now we've kind of cleaned up um, all the all this text up here that would have been kind of tedious to write a bunch of times. Uh, we've now written it out. We now have it easy to access. Now we can use our custom components we've created. And if you want to ever style stuff differently, make it look different, really easy to do from within here. So you could build a completely custom form. So we'll say custom text input. And when you pass it a label, call it name, the name of the input will be just name, lowercase, type will equal text, and our placeholder will say Frank will be our name. All right, so we got that. So now we can do another one and here, we just got a couple of small changes to make. So our label here will be email. Email, the type is gonna be email. So we'll validate properly. And then we'll just do frank at the tank.com. So if I save that, boom. So we have a pretty simple site. And you can see our error messages are currently working. So it says it's required. You can even type, it says invalid email address, which is pretty cool. Um, you see, it must be at least three characters. Once I type three characters, it works. If I type too many, it must be 15 characters or less. So we're making progress. So we're almost there. Let's go ahead and keep chugging along here. So now let's add our custom select field that we wanted to put in there. So it's a custom select label equals special power. And we'll say name equals special power camel case. And now in here, we need to pass it some options. So this will be for our drop downs. So say value equals I'll just say for the first one, select a special power. And I'll just paste this a couple times. So our first one will be flight. We are first special power. Next one will be invisibility. Oh man, does I misspell that? Then wealthy bat guy. And finally other. Let's just update their text that gets rendered here. And finally other. So I save that, we should come back over and we see our drop down. Perfect. So you can select something. This is required, okay. Boom. And we're able to select our special power, flight. So finally, let's move on to our checkbox here, our last form input. Custom checkbox. So name equals accepted terms. And you remember our custom checked box has this children field. So essentially we're gonna pass that in 
and just render it straight out. So whatever's between these tags here is gonna get rendered out as the text alongside. So I accept the terms and conditions of our sign up form. And we see it here, you can check it, uncheck it, check it. Once you move away though, you must accept the terms and conditions. It'll let you know, give you a little error message. Awesome. So then finally, before we close the form out, we need our submit button. So we come down here, type button, type equals submit. So we know it's for the form. Then here, this is kind of cool. So we can access that props and type dot is submitting. And there's a few other helpers in there. Use the turn area operator to check. Um, so we'll say if it is submitting, then we want to render the text loading. Otherwise, I'm going to render the text submit. So let me save that. Let's come back over. And it looks like we have a completed form. So I can come up here, I can type in my name, type in my email. I can select a special power. Uh, wealthy bad guy. Save that. Choose wealthy bad guy and I accept the terms. I click submit. It changes to loading and there's all our data. So that's all the data we would send in a payload to the server if we were actually building a, a sign up form connected to a server. And then if we did this right, we should click OK and the form should reset. Loading should go back to submit. Perfect. And so this is actually pretty helpful because we get some basic form validation out of the box. We get the required. We must be at least three characters, which this would take forever to write by hand normally uh, in React. And just forms in general are just pretty tedious to do, um, especially when you have these kind of unblur actions to try to catch all those actions and then render the correct error message at the right time. Um, so we click here, it shouldn't submit because our form isn't working. And so you could add on, you know, submit, handle submit. If there's errors, you can check for that and render some uh, additional pop-up message or something like that. But it's pretty self-explanatory to the user when you're going through here and you're typing and it says invalid email address as you're typing. Uh, pretty, pretty helpful. Uh, so that is Formic in a nutshell. Uh, it has some more advanced features, more types of form inputs and ways to, to handle things. Uh, so I highly recommend checking it out. It'll save you a lot of time when you create forms in React. Thanks for watching. Take care.